Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Wednesday, November 27th. Another pause in the marketplace here. Dow Jones uh, really flat, basically up about 26 cents. NASDAQ up 23. That was the bigger mover on the day. S&P up 27 cents and the Russell up 980 for the day. This uh, pretty much was a little bit of a gap up and then uh, markets uh, was chopping around, making higher highs and higher lows on very, very light rump volume. We broke out again to new highs and then literally at the end of the day, the markets, uh, sell programs hit the markets and literally wiped out all of its gains uh, to close basically flat when the market, I think the S&P was, E-minis were trading up about four, four and a half handles. So uh, close basically flat. And this is the type of trading where I say be very, very cautious. You could be long the market and get stopped out at the end of the day. And that's just uh, uh, not, the, not the great trading that, you, that uh, most of the market participants, traders, investors are looking for. So um, we are in holiday mode, um, and it looks like uh, probably nothing is going to happen today. And, of course, we have a half a day on Friday. Quick admin note, uh, no morning call video on Friday, but, of course, we will resume on Monday. Um, because of the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Uh, so let's just get right into the charts. It's going to be real quick. Um, nothing has changed. We have warning signs, red flags about us in all of our indicators telling us that the markets are not moving, the S&P is moving, the Dow Jones are moving. And quite frankly, we do have rotation in stocks. A lot of, lot of money is coming out of big cap tech and going into the safe haven. So yes, that is a bearish signal, but also bullish because money is not coming out of the market. So we've got to continue to realize that and no matter what if you, and you know uh, I would not be looking to advocate a short I would not be looking to put shorts on hedges yes uh, but trying to short the market to just get your head ripped off in this type of environment um, are the markets are extremely overboard are we are in a bubble um, valuations are high yes yes and yes uh, but still doesn't price has not told us to get short the market so that's what we're going to do is wait for price to roll over um, there'll be plenty of time to get uh, to get short the market when that does happen. I do think volatility is going to pick up. It's surprising enough that um, since the October 9th low, we have not had any selling pressure at all, which is absolutely insane. Um, you know, being in the market for 25 years, looking at the markets and trading the markets, I've never seen anything like it in my life. 2013, for that matter, was just the same. Literally up, up, and away one or two day moves lower and the market just kind of ripped up higher and of course compliments of, of uh, mr obama and the federal government pumping liquidity into this market and they probably see something that we don't see and that's why they continue to do so uh but nonetheless we, we're traders and we've got to follow what price tells us okay uh so right now the market is up the trend is up and uh, there's no reason to fight it let's go right into the indicators just to show you um you can see when the when the, the tick here, this is the end of the day tick reading, we see we're making low lows and low highs, and we're getting closer to that zero mark. So, And again, this could be, uh, I, I would not, um, let's put it this way, the last couple of days, uh, you know, Monday, Tuesday, trading, and maybe Friday, uh, a little lighter than usual because of what's happening because of our Thanksgiving holiday. But if, even if you go back a little bit, even going into October, you could see, that we have just been making lower lows and lower highs on the ticks. So not good, right? We want to continue to be elevated above 600 just to show that we have a, a meaningful buying uh, going on, but we don't. Uh, but again, the S&P and the Dow continues to tick higher and make new highs. So, um, And of course, NASDAQ uh, uh, 4,000 hit 4,000 and closed above the 4,000 psychological mark for the first time since I think, uh, oh gosh, I don't remember, uh, way back when, um, 2000, I think. 2001 or two uh, but anyway we do have this um, lower lows and lower highs so again something to just keep in the back of your mind get don't get too complacent we are still on a sell signal stocks above the 50-day moving average uh, I mean if the markets are moving and the index are moving then the stocks should be moving but they're not they're actually rotating out of um, higher risk yielding um, uh, assets uh, and going into the safe haven so uh, let's just keep an eye on this again this is the sell zone area where you want to see it as you can see here here, 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 and every time I hit that area, but we haven't seen it in uh, all of November, um, and maybe not. We might not see it. You know, maybe the market just grinds higher going into the end of the year, and that could very well happen. But again, uh, in the meantime, we want to be looking for quality stocks that have just pulled back from on profit taking uh, into some heavy support, and that's what you want to be looking to buy. I won't be chasing any 
stocks or adding to any positions at these levels. We could grind higher until December, and once January hits, boom, see you later. Markets get sold, off, sold into. Remember, we still have tax selling that comes in the next couple of weeks, two to three weeks. So that's going to at least put a blip into the marketplace. Okay, new highs, new lows. want to just show you that again. Now we have not breaking out of this area, okay? Kind of dipped a little bit lower yesterday, uh, but watch the new highs and lows. Look at the MACD. MACD at its lo uh, almost at its zero line, ready to break higher here. RSI above the 50, uh, and that's probably going to break higher as well. So I'm going to be continue to watch this new high, new low. Take a look at this. I haven't showed you this chart in a while. This is New York Stock Exchange, new 52-week highs. We continue to be below, making lower lows and lower highs. Again, not a good sign if the markets are making new highs. So if the spiders or the S&P is making new highs, why aren't stocks making new highs? So that's another concern of mine. Uh, but again, we're going to continue to look at it. McClellan Oscillator really hasn't done anything. Uh, up until the October 9th lows, uh, we have done nothing here. We're just literally in um, in the zero line here. So nothing really to say about that. Uh, BKX, the banking index, love the banks. Banks took a breather yesterday. Um, I think the banks are going to be a really good, good buy. Uh, and any pullbacks, I would be looking to add the banks. Any pullbacks you get, I'd be looking to add. Um, I would love to see you know, uh, a, a 2 to 5% or even an 8% if that's uh, asking too much of a correction so we can uh, uh, buy some of these stocks. But unfortunately, at these lofty levels, and even day trading, if you look at it, you got to be really selective. You know, you just, you, you're buying into the into the day. We have an, a trend high, and out of the blue, a sell program hits, and then uh, you get stopped out, like I mentioned earlier in the video. So uh, just a word of caution, holiday trading is very, very, very whippy. Okay, banks. So again, maybe back to the 8 let it come back in here, uh, and then um, I'd be looking for something like that in that matter. Now, WTI, I want just a word of caution here. Um, I like crude oil at these levels. Uh, I do like them. We have positive divergence. We're at 20-day lows. We're at good, good support here. However, if you're trading this, make sure you know what you're getting into. This is a counter-trend trade for the long side. We are lower, making lower lows and lower highs. You can see clearly here, bear flag, bear flag bear flag and then really another bear flag within this sideways consolidation here okay ideally if you're looking to buy crude I like to see 9550 get taken out here that's really the safe bet if you're looking to buy it and knowing that your risk is going to be 92 because a break below this you see this area here heavy heavy support but if we break this look at the volume profiles we have a thin zone just like it did up here ripped right up into this area and stopped this is what's going to happen. This will probably flush back to um, 80, 86 to 88. Remember that. So um, if we were here in April, there's no reason why this thing doesn't hold. This thing flushes. So make sure you're not stubborn with your stops. And we're down now about 43 cents in crude as we speak. So if we break lower, um, make sure you get out because this it's, it will flush. And, it, and uh, uh, this, co this currency, uh, excuse me, the currency, <laughs> this commodity uh, and most commodities are trending so as of right now we're trending lower so any big spots here taking taking uh, long side trades you're counter trend trading okay so just remember that all right let's go right into the chart segment real quick as you can see here we're stalled right above the uh, uh, lower trend line of the March 2012 lows so <clears throat> pausing still grossly over overbought but again not a sell signal we could pause and move higher again um, will not uh, rule that out so remember guys uh, but if we have anything I'd like to see is get at least back to the 20 day moving average but it just hasn't happened there has not been a seller in sight uh, you get these little blips of selling and that is it it's just totally incredible okay um, diamonds way overextended the Dow Jones ETF at the upper end of the Bollinger Band riding the upper end of the band uh, 20 day low the 20 days uh, moving average is right up in here which coincides nicely with this uh, trend line from March 2012 so uh, I'd like to see it get back at least here get that get back into the off the nosebleed section and back in here but uh, I would not be chasing um, any index or stocks at these areas here at these uh, lofty levels transports again right up in this area here you can see We've had a channel, numerous channels, and then break, numerous channels break, and then we're actually in another channel. Uh, if you just draw this little line here, you can see that we are in another channel going higher. Uh, and again, if crude oil sells off, well, this is going to be good for transportation sector. And it really provides stimulus for the whole economy, right? 
everything is driven off of energy. So uh, this is another sideways consolidation. Uh, excuse me, sideways uptrend. Excuse me, uptrend channel. Um, up, higher low, low, higher higher high, higher lows, low high, low high, and you can see now breaking hold in this area here. But once it breaks back above it, plenty of room to run to this new channel high. So again, can't rule out the fact that um, these transports and everything else like uh, similar to these indexes can move higher. Uh, new target would be 113.98, call it 114 in the IWMs, which is the Russell, holding up pretty well. But again, uh, Russell actually unwounded some of its overbought readings here and now getting back to being overbought again. Um, so I don't see much happening, but again, you got to use a little bit of word, a word of caution, definitely, uh, to say the least. Okay, um, XLF, right up to these areas, ran right up. Um, and again, it could at least get back to the 8, um, 8 EMA, at least back to the, maybe test this area here to move higher. But again, a little bit extended. Um, I wouldn't be chasing these at the moment. Now, Goldman really just hit our target at 170. We had a target of, of 170, and it basically completed that target in, uh, in a good, what, about a week or so, two weeks. So um, a nice trading Goldman. You had to be really patient with this one, but uh, we did call the uh, uh, Goldman and J.P. Morgan real, real nice. I like, I still like Goldman. I like J.P. Morgan, and I like Citibank. Those are my three big banks I want to buy, and I want to buy on pullbacks. And here's J.P. Morgan, as you can see here, really exploded. We had that possible settlement talk. We back tested, and then we just broke out. And once we closed above this symmetrical triangle. We gapped up and broke out. Now, J.P. Morgan needs to come back in again, and uh, we can get back into these areas here, 5580, 50, even 56. I'd be looking to nibble in uh, into a long position, J.P. Morgan. Okay, uh, networking uh, tech really not doing much of anything. Still valid on this head and shoulders pattern. And Apple, Apple broke out yesterday. So now Apple is viable for pullbacks, right? So if you had this area here, Right, so if you could take this area, uh, let's just move this out. Um, nice little ascending triangle, call it even a bull flag, if you will, right up in here. And we are out of the channel now. So Apple is free now to at least test the highs of 540 and then maybe go higher. Okay, it is coming into some seasonality strength. Uh, we do have the Christmas holiday, Apple does well. Um, so any pullbacks in Apple, you can look to leg into a long position. And as you can see here, we're not even overbought, so plenty of room to run to the upside. Three-day accumulation on volume. Apple looks really good to an upside move higher. And lastly is the Qs, as you can see here, uh, moving higher as well with Apple. Okay, guys, that's really about it. I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, please enjoy your day with family and friends. Everybody needs to get away from the screens. The markets will be open in Europe and overseas, um, but we will be closed, obviously, for Thanksgiving. And we do have a half a day on Friday. All right, have a great day. Enjoy the long weekend. We will be back on Monday with a full report. Take care, everybody.